What's going on guys, Speedy here from Complex and it is a very special day today. In this room right now, we've got a guy, he's one of the most talented people of the last 20 years. He sings, he's mad funny, he acts. And sitting right across from him is Jamie Foxx. Uh, uh, ah, Jamie Foxx. Ah, 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 ah. Queens in the building. Queens is in the building. Jamie, what's going on, man? How are you? Yeah. So first and foremost, the reason we're here, uh, you got something new. You got something yeah. new going on. Um, you have a kind of interview series. I know yeah. it's partnered with Grey Goose. Yeah. Grey Goose, rather, it's called yeah. Off Script. Talk to us a little bit about it. Well, here's, here's the thing. When people talk to me about uh, the Off Script with Grey Goose, they say, why did you do this? I, I've been doing this for years. What I always want to do is put artists in the same room. Like the first time I did something like putting artists in the same room, it was Puff back in the day when Puff was like, we ain't going nowhere days. Dang, 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 dang. And I remember he was so big at the time that we couldn't even get in our own clubs when he came to LA. He was that. Like, Puff is here, you can't mm -hmm. get in. But um, I threw a party at my house. And the party was for a couple of reasons. For one, we wanted to celebrate what he was doing. Yo, Puff, come to my little house, and I, I want to celebrate you. And I, I called 200 of my coolest friends, like artists, though, people who were, you know, not there to hate. You know what I'm saying? So Puff gets there. He said, oh, that's the actress on this show. And that's the, I said, yeah, we all hang out together. We're like a family out here. But we want to celebrate you. But at that, at that time, <clears throat> Puff had a room <clears throat> in my house. I got the DJ playing all his music. Food and stuff. I had fried chicken, Kentucky fried chicken, but I put it on a nice plate so it looked nice. I had cola, <laughs> put it in a nice picture. Standing on the on like up against the wall, nobody knew who it was. It was Jay Z. Oh, was Hope like, was in the building. Yeah, but nobody knew at the time. It was back that far. And okay. I said, What's up, man? It's a nice party. This is crazy. So this is nice. It's <laughs> nice. It's all the time right there. Said, yeah, it's crazy. Man. I know you heard of you. Uh, but we would have Puff like talk. He would tell us the keys and the disciplines on how he was, how he got on. Then I'm walking into my garage and it was a tall dude, short guy. I see the short dude, he said, yo, it's like this all the time, be like, you know, like girls and karaoke. And I said, yeah, yeah, man, like, who are you? Oh, we the Neptunes. Oh, my name is Pharrell. Pharrell. Yeah. Oh. So it started early where I would put artists together, sort of interview them, and then they would sort of semi-perform, like Puff, grab the mic, throw the parties. So I've done that now for Drake, Ross, uh, 2 Chains. Every time someone is celebrated, I would have them come to my house and I called it on my balcony. Mm -hmm. So we did one for uh, Drake. Now I had a bigger house. Drake came through, it was 2,500 people. 2,500 people, God damn. And I would say 2,000 women counted. 500 guys. That's an amazing ratio, first and foremost. Yeah, it was, t the women hated it because oh, I, I would have loved but, to but have it, but it, but it, But it was great. They hated part of it, but they they enjoyed this. Drake shows up, uh, it's his first album, so the clothes didn't fit. You know, it wasn't Little tailored baggy. yet. You know, it says baggy, it ain't fit yet. We ain't got the tailor yet. We ain't got the tailor <laughs> money. So it was the, 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 the Letterman jacket, and they get out. And I had a drive-in theater poster of his artwork with the peacoat, with the, you know, the right one. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, wow, you know, his friends. Like, I see a few people in the back want to say hello. He come back there and it's all of it. It's Busta, it's, every, it's everybody celebrating. So he's on my balcony. I interview him. I say, every time someone comes to my place, you know, we interview, we toast, but you got you to gotta perform. Yeah. So he goes, oh, man, uh, 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 what should I do? I lean in, I say, sing. So he grabbed a mic. Leaned over the balcony and said, uh, I'm more than just an option. Hey, 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 refuse to be DJ. I'm better find you. Place goes up in flames, right? So now we party, 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 and then around four o'clock in the morning, most people are gone, maybe like 300 people, and I always do a contrast to it. I had a, uh, a, a concert pianist mm -hmm. show up at four in the morning and play all the Drake's music unplugged. Uh, and then we wrapped on him. So all of that being said, this is what I pitched to Grey Goose. I said, hey, listen, this is up my alley. We would always interview these people. I said, but this show gives us an opportunity to sort of condense it and then interview the people that move me. Don't run up on the path. Yeah, don't run up on the path. Don't run up the on- The bodyguards is to protect <laughs> you from me. <laughs> Nice girls don't look like they're having a lot of fun. <laughs> the villain can be a lot of fun because you get to do stuff that you would never do. I just misunderstood. Ron Howard said you was the greatest improv ever. I don't know about that, but what that's very think? nice of him. You want to call me Rocky, call me Rock. Right? right? I'm going to get Because we didn't know because I was like, I should I call him. No, yes, of course. No more Rock. <laughs> no, it's always Rock.
Let's talk about some of the guests you have on the show. I feel like people like me yeah. uh, or other publications are at a disadvantage yeah. because you, out the gate, are getting The Rock. You're getting yeah. Chadwick Boseman. You're getting you know all of these people. Uh, why you got to shit on us like that? It's not that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Never, never shitting. <laughs> uh, but, but here's the thing. <laughs> no shit on What it is is the reason that I'm able to do that is because of what I did early. Right, right, right. So what you got to do is make sure you, you 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 provide an opportunity for those young folks now mm -hmm. that are going to be in us, including yourself, to be able to come together so the ask is different. I don't have to ask the, the, the manager or the agent, I say, yo, we just ask them blessed. directly. So yeah. basically, get in early. So if I find someone like Drake, maybe I can link them with a tailor, yeah, get in good, uh, uh, any, and then... Any, anything that you want. Like, my whole thing was like this. Anytime somebody come to my house that was comfortable, Denzel been in my house. So when Denzel, Denzel Washington, Denzel Washington okay. been in my house. So when he come to my house, he sit at the head of the table. I got other artists there, Tyrese, different people, where he's laying down like different disciplines about how he got on. So when I asked him, I said, could you do just a little bit of that for off script? And Denzel, you know, Denzel is not an easy ask, but I said if we could get Denzel to say another New York, Mount Vernon, we get him to say yes, everybody else will come. So when D said, oh, all right, okay, I'll come down. You know? So once D came, we was good. <laughs> Sean Connery, let me tell you a Sean Connery story. Uh oh. He was up for The Untouchables. I was up that year Ooh. for, I think it was Cry of Freedom. He comes out to present an award and got a three-minute standing ovation uh. for presenting an award. Wow. I went to get the coats. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we'll get the coats, because I know I ain't winning tonight. <laughs> so, so, so now we're leaving. I'm leaving without the Oscar, yeah. right? But as I'm leaving, I see the back of where they're doing the, the getting the, the, the meal ready, the food ready yeah. for, the, for the governor's ball. Yeah, yeah. I see a big tray. I'm like, I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm from around the way. I'm leaving with something. Then my mother told me to get the flower arrangement. <laughs> it's a true story. There's got to be someone out there who hasn't made an appearance at one of your parties. Who's, who's somebody that you'd like to roll through? Aside from Speedy, of course. Okay, Speedy, fuck it. You come to the crib, <laughs> we'll throw a joint for you. Say no more. I'm not kidding. Bring the cameras, you tell me who you want to have there, we make the shit pop. Listen, strict guest look, list. Look, Everyone's look. raising their hand back here, but hey. strict guest list. Ralphie was there. Everybody. Who hasn't come though? Who do you need to be at a Jamie Foxx party? Who hasn't come to the house? Obama ain't been at your crib. No, Obama ain't been to the crib, but Bill Clinton called me on the phone. What? Why? And how did he get your number? Back, he was trying, he was trying, he was trying to get the nomination for his. Oh, for his he's this was, But this is when, this is when Obama was running though. Copy. So I was like, I'm go, that's my, I gotta go yeah, with, and yeah, Obama yeah. was 60 points down, but I get the call and it was President Clinton on the phone. Jamie, we're doing a lot of great things. Over here, we just want to know if we can get your. I said, man, I love you, man. You so dope, man. But I gotta go with the brother. It was crazy. Yeah. The next thing he you should, know, he we was up in there. We was up in there. <laughs> we was up in there. Hey. It was a good. It was a and good. And if there is any indication <laughs> that <laughs> America is not the most incredible country in the world. <laughs> you still haven't given me somebody, Jamie. I need somebody who. I can't think of anybody who hasn't come. Who has name somebody? Name somebody. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan ain't coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael B. Jordan coming. <laughs> we got Michael B. Jordan. We got the young. We got that young shit. That I young mean, Jordan. That's your man's though. All that right, young. All right. That young. He was there. Yeah. He was there all the time. Yeah. Chadwick Boseman sitting at the crib a year before Black Panther comes out. Like, what you think? I said, man, you, what you boy? You better get your shit ready. You about to be out of here. How about Meek Mill? Has Meek, Meek Mill yeah. ever popped up? No, look, all those dudes. Yeah, come on, those are eat. Those are, anybody hip hop? Yeah. Right. Anybody hip hop? Floyd Money Man. Oh man, of course. 50. And, and, and Floyd is fifty, of course. Floyd is the best because Floyd tell you money story. Yo, yo, Jay Fox, Jay Fox, Jay Fox, look, look right here, Jay Fox. See what the check say right there? That's a, uh, forty million, Jay Fox, all the time, baby, <laughs> all the time, Jay Fox, all the time. Uh, uh, 50, 50 million. Oh, Jay Fox, see right there, check right there, fifty million, all the time. <laughs> Jay Fox, it's crazy, it's crazy. He's one of those guys that's tough to have a conversation about anything other than it's, money. It's the greatest conversation in the world, though. You know why? Because he'll talk about money for a second, then he start talking about boxing. When you start talking about boxing, everybody in the room. Cause I said, I asked him, I said, what about Pacquiao? Yeah, he, he, he got dynamite, he got dynamite, dynamite both hands, he got, but he ain't me though. <laughs> he ain't me. I mean, he'll break down the boxing game and what he did in boxing that made it, that, that he made the business of it. Mm -hmm. you no, know, he, he said, I intentionally became the bad guy because he learned that, that the world 
loves hating people. I said, well, yeah, they, they, they love to hate you, Jay Fox, so therefore, I, I, I always make them think I'm gonna lose. But I'm not gonna lose. So everybody's paying the money to see him lose. So he drops, right. ah. oh, it's dope, it's dope. And he sit there for hours and talk, it's, it's, it's dope. So let's talk boxing for a second. We've been waiting for a while. Yeah. You know what I'm about to ask yeah, you. Yeah. What's up with the Tyson joint, man? Yeah, What's up we, with we it? we around the corner with it. And, 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 and with Tyson, it's one of those things where it, it, has, to be, it has to be time. Because I want to play the older, Mike Tyson, because we, we we pretty much know the young, the fighting, everything, but it's the older Mike Tyson. See, I was in, I was on stage, maybe 90, 1990. I'm on stage as a young stand-up. I go to my Mike Tyson joke, nobody laughs, because Mike Tyson's in the audience. Oh, and I'm like, ain't nobody laughing. And then the guy who's with Mike said, that's cause Mike is in here. I'm like, oh shit! And this one, Mike was knocking people out for smiling and just regular shit. <laughs> And I was like, he in here in the whole crowd, and there was a black girl in the front, like, what you gonna do, Jamie? You gonna tell your little joke? You scared? Mm. And I was like, hold on, let me let me get right. I said, I said, I just wanted to. And the dude yelled, I said, Mike said, do the joke. But that shit better be funny. And I was like, oh shit. So I'll do the joke. It's funny. We get standing ovation. Mike comes up after, there he is, come here, let me talk to you. You funny motherfucker, come hang out with me. So I start hanging out with Mike. So I watched Mike when he had the Lamborghini truck. I watched Mike when he go into the, to the, he was bigger than life. He'd go into a club and everybody, he'd talk to a girl, Sam, what the hell, how you doing? You're so pretty, you like BMWs? And they'd be like, what? You like BMWs? We tell him, let's go, if you like BMWs, let's go. I love BMWs. <laughs> he would take him to the BMW dealership, open it up and buy him a BMW. And he would just, just, I'm hanging out with Mike. And of course, his guys would go to the houses of the girls later on, knock on the door and say, yo, we need to get them keys. Oh, I knew, I knew, I knew y'all was coming here. Get... But I watched that mic. And then all of the pitfalls, all of the things. And then once we started talking about doing this, I called Mike, I said, Mike. And it was a different mic. How you doing? I'll pray this to Allah, my brother, how are you? Hmm. How's everything? I'm happy. Why are you happy? I'm just happy because I don't have any money anymore. I'm like, why would you be happy about that? Because nobody, nobody, nobody can take anything from me anymore. I'm happy. I don't have any money. I don't have any devils. I don't have any demons around me anymore. And I'm like, that's, that's the guy. That's the person we want to get to. But that takes a little time. So informing the story, the way we want to tell the story, sort of in a flashback where we see Mike shadow boxing with this kid and the kid says my dad says you were you were a great boxer he says, don't worry about what your dad said just slip the left and throw the right and then when he throws the right he hits mike and mike is falling in slow motion and then when he hits the ground it's the last fight he had ding 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 and he's laying on the ropes and the ref comes in he's getting ready to count but he looks mike and i was at the fight mike is looking at all of the people that he sort of excited all the people he let down all the women, all the everything, and he just, and, he, and if you remember, he spit his mouthpiece out, and he's just looking. And before we could <clears throat> relax into that moment, he, the, the ref goes, one, two! And we flash back to when he's a young Mike. So all of these sort of intricate parts, just like with Ray Charles, Ray Charles took two and a half, three years to get to where we were ready to say action. So it's almost on the same pace. Do you have a that, release date for it yet? Not even close. Because you have to, in other words, you have to sit down in, inside the character and then Mike has to, to bless it. I know it sounds weird, but he has to bless it so that when you're watching it, it's not, a, it's not an impersonation of him. Me and the Mike Tyson character, we even did a test where I gained 200, I was 225 pounds. Dressed me up as Mike, you couldn't tell the difference. You know, and that's just, just on basic mm -hmm. makeup. With the technology now, I want to be able to get into what Mike is, sit in front of his kids, and the kids go, Daddy. So that's going to take a little time. And then for, new, for the new world, it's got to be that way because we can see behind curtains easier. So, so the process is, is coming. It's coming. Along, it's coming. It's, yeah. Cool. All right. My last question for you. Uh, the internet absolutely shell-shocked when they found out that Jamie Foxx was not your real name. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why. People do the same thing to me when they find out Speedy's not my real name. Is that it's, right? Yeah, it's ridiculous to me. Yeah. Um, but quickly though, tell us why Jamie Foxx. Where did the name from, from, come well, from? Give, give us well, the Well, first of all, it was a trip that people were calling me, yo, nigga, you, you ain't you. I said, what? <laughs> See, you Eric Bishop? Who is Eric Bishop? 
I said, that's, I've always, I've always told that story. But when I first got to LA, like I did my stand up. It was open mic night, and I, I did really well. And so, uh, but I was going by Eric Bishop. And then after that, they wouldn't pick me anymore. I said, man, yo, I've been putting my name on the list and nobody ever picked me. Yeah, 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 we'll get to you. But I found out that the comics was running the list. So when they saw me, they didn't want no, they didn't want that pressure. They didn't want so the they, smoke. Yeah, they yeah, just yeah. go like, damn, he ain't. So I'm like, wow, so two months, I'll never get up. But I noticed that it would be 100 guys, three girls. The girls would always get up because they needed to break up the monotony of the show. So I was at, uh, I was in Santa Monica Improv at the time and they were doing a show called Evening at the Improv. And so they didn't really know me. So I wrote down unisex names on the list. Stacy Green, Tracy Brown, Jamie Foxx. So the guy says, all right, let's start it out. Uh, fresh Meat, they call us Fresh Meat because we were amateurs or whatever. Uh, this is the first people, uh, Tony, uh, Terry or whatever. And then Jamie Foxx, is she here? I said, yo, that's me, money. So they pick me, I go up in like the heart of the show and I end up getting a standing ovation. So the Jamie Foxx name worked and so uh, once that happened, I, I said, wow, this is kind of a cool little thing. And then they thought I was an asshole at first, too, because I wouldn't respond to the name when people would call me. You, did, I you didn't register Jamie yeah. Foxx yet, right, right, So, right. So what happened was I said Jamie Foxx, and I, I came up with it. Back in the day, like doing stand-up with Tommy Davidson, Chris Rye, Adam Sandler, we always just have jackets. Mm -hmm. So I put, my jacket was black, the black letter on this jacket, with the gold, with the gold, black and gold, and in the back it had Sly as a dot, dot, dot. Foxhole production, Ooh, all these different I like things. That. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's how it, it was it was born. But you know, the internet is a, is a internet is a weird. It's, it's a weird. Yeah, it's, it's a weird. Thing, sometimes man. ridiculous. Yeah. Your new series off script is out now. Lastly, why should people go check it out? I think it's dope because it, it's it's not it's not clickbait or anything like that. It's really letting the uh, the actors or actresses that I've that I've picked just talk freely and not be. Uh, uh, caught up in anything. Gabrielle Union is dope as fuck, she's mm -hmm. a boss. Sarah Silverman is a boss who I've known in the, in the stand-up world as a boss. Melissa McCarthy, vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, funny. You know. And then The Rock, that's an interesting thing for, to go from wrestling to the biggest, biggest star in the world. Biggest actor in the world. Way. And Denzel was nice enough to be the first one to say yes. And when Denzel said yes, like I said, everybody else uh, came The dominoes so, just all fell. Yeah, because if, if D says it, and we really do look to D as like the, as the acting guy, he could, get the, he could get the award any year. It, every time he does something, it's amazing. I think when artists lose their fanness, mm -hmm. like when they can see another artist and not feel nothing about it, it's when we start to slip away a little bit. I got it. I feel like as long as I have that excitement about seeing somebody else, you learn, you grow, you get different things from them. So it's also cool for me and, and cool for the fans to check out some, you know, shit that they may not have seen. Definitely. Jamie, I appreciate the time. Make sure Speedy. you guys go check out his new series. And none of you guys are invited to my birthday party <laughs> happening at Jamie's crib uh, in LA. You tell Maybe me. Maybe sometime next year. Let's do it. Cool? My man. Jamie, appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you.